Rich Tarani with TMC here. Thanks for watching. We're at Interop 2013 in Las Vegas. On our program is uh, Chris from Motorola Solutions. Uh, Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Rich. Thanks for having me on. So uh, let me know uh, if I'm a typical uh, potential customer here and I'm um, speaking with you at the show. What are some of the things I should know about what you're uh, coming out with and what you're doing? Well, the big thing we're announcing here is our 802.11ac uh, line of products. We have three products that are coming out. One is a modular design, building off our modularity that we have done in, a, in the past. Second is a cosmetically pleasing design with a nice enclosure that can be put on the ceiling and sort of melt away to not draw attention to itself. And the third is a ruggedized design for an IP67 enclosure that can be used outdoors, freezers, any place where you need a little bit more weatherization and ruggedization to your enclosures. So uh, you mentioned AC at the top. Uh, are we ready for AC? Is the industry ready? Is the standard up to speed? No <laughs> pun intended. Yeah, the, the standard is in good shape. We, we have every reason to believe that AC is going to be a wonderful technology. And the way we look at AC is, why wouldn't I put it in? It's got more speeds. It's got more feeds. There will be clients coming out that, are, that actually are able to do AC. We're not going to charge a premium for it. So if I've got a choice between putting 11N or AC into my network, I'm going to put AC in. I'm going to allow those clients to come in that are capable of AC to connect at faster speeds. That makes more efficient use of my spectrum overall because they're not hogging up my bandwidth. And all in all, I have a better network experience for everybody. Now, you mentioned, mentioned uh, modularity. Can you elaborate, please? Certainly. So we have a line of access points that allow modules to be clipped onto the side of the AP to add new features and new functionality at a later time. A couple modules that we are releasing with our overall announce with Wing 5.5, we are bringing out a sensor module for security. We are bringing in a LTE backhaul module to allow for backhauling data across a LTE link instead of across the wire. We are also bringing in an ambient sensor model that can actually sense the light in an environment and turn off and put the AP in a low power state if the lights go off. So regarding that temperature sensor, does it uh, use the Wi-Fi? How does it communicate? So actually that, that light sensor is directly onto the AP and it actually just utilizes the sensors that are in that module to communicate back across the modular connection into the AP and allow the AP to utilize that data to make intelligent decisions. Now the temperature sensor though, that data, if I'm trying to get that temperature data um, from the AP, mm -hmm. uh, what technology is used to communicate that back to the uh, back office? Ah, so if you're trying to query the information that that sensor is detecting, you can do that via SNMP. You can also just pull it directly from the AP. So there will be controls and an API put out that allow people to get that information and funnel it to the applications that they want to funnel it to. Excellent. Anything else we should know? Uh, the other thing you should know is that we are actually looking at what new features and functionality we believe AC and this higher throughput will bring forward. And in service of that, we believe video is going to be very, very key. So what we've done is we've brought that application focus and that application modularity to our controllers as well. And we've brought a new application on our controllers that we're calling content caching. That allows us to cache content on those controllers so that when someone hits that wireless network, queries content, be it a video, be it a large file, instead of having to traverse the WAN, potentially having a bad connection and potentially having a bad experience, that cached copy can be served directly to them. So what they experience is very quick connection and very quick access to data, rather than a slow connection and unpleasant experience with the wireless. So uh, I guess a use case there would be uh, someone within an organization finds a YouTube video, an instructional YouTube video, or even um, a commercial that the company is rolling out, and they send it out, they send the link out to thousands of people within the organization. Uh, there's, and so many people now are using wireless devices, so the cached copy is used rather than having to continually pull that video and wait for the video. That's an excellent example. So YouTube videos, it can even be internal corporate videos that are hosted on a centralized server, but you want to push out. There are lots of different e examples that people can give where having a cached localized copy can be highly beneficial to the overall employees. And we can actually demo some of that for you today. What you can see is we have two iPads set up. One is actually connected to a network that we don't have caching enabled on. One is hooked up to a network that we do have caching enabled on. We're going to try and query the exact same video on both iPads, and we'll see what the experience that the user has is. As we can see, the iPad is pulling from a cached copy, despite the fact that he believes he's going out to YouTube. It's a wonderful video experience. The video starts up immediately. 